ಇನ್ನೊಂದ್ಸರಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಹಲೋ ಹಾಯ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಐಮ್ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ವಾರಿ ಯುವರ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಟರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಮೆಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಸಾರಿ ಮೆಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸಸ್ ಎಮ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಸೋ ಫಾರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯುನಿಟ್ ಆರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಕ್ಡೌನ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಥ್ರೀ ತ್ರೀ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೆಟಲ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ತ್ರೀ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟಾಟ್ ಯು ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಮೋಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಮೋಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಮೋಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕ್ಸ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ಸ್ ಸೈಂಟಿಫಿಕಲ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಪರ್ಮನೆಂಟ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದೆನ್ ಗ್ರಾವಿಟಿ ಕಾಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದೆನ್ ಅದರ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ right we have discussed around six important cell molding techniques that we have discussed then uh, that i have taken for two classes then the third class i have taken or spoken about the melting furnaces means if you have to produce a casting first step is to what are the different options to melt the metal we have discussed and this class and uh, that, that was the part of the unit number 3 uh, part number 3 that uh, unit number 3 so that unit number 3 was over so coming to this that is unit number 3 what i have discussed i'll write down here once again so unit number 3 we have discussed about i have discussed about the special molding techniques okay special molding techniques we have seen okay i'll not go much into details of that we have discussed that around six techniques we have discussed six techniques we have discussed and then we have discussed about melting furnaces we have discussed about the melting furnaces melting furnaces and in melting furnaces also we have discussed different type of melting furnaces something around six melting furnaces we have discussed uh, so six melting furnaces we have discussed so this is what we have done uh, in the unit number three all together i have taken some three classes for this three classes i have taken three classes okay on this now in today's class what i am going to t- talk is the remaining portion of the unit number two i don't know whether you remember or no in the unit number two these are the things which are there in that uh, i have covered up with the first part first topic the second topic the third topic fourth topic fifth topic these all things have been discussed only this core part core c-o-r-e core this this part and the one that is casting defects had to be done and i told you all that casting defects is as a self-study you can all do that so you can uh, thinking presuming that you will be doing that i am expected to teach only this one that is course okay c o r e course so this is what i am going to discuss in today's class that is under the unit number 2 under the unit number 2 i am going to teach about c o r e core and in plural form it is called as course so this is what i am going to discuss in today's class okay and with that all the portion which was left out to be taught by me that is unit number 2's core part and in this unit number 3 special molding techniques as well as the melting furnaces will be over so with this the portion what i had to cover will be over so just quickly going through with what is about this unit number 2 we have discussed about the sand preparation techniques you remember that we make use of a uh, instrument or a device called a sand muller for that then uh, the variables which affect the properties of the sand we have discussed and in that we have discussed about the grain size sand and its shape then uh, we have discussed about the percentage of water and clay how does it affects the final properties of the green sand mold we have checked about or studied about the molding procedures how it affects the uh, final properties of the sand we have discussed about how the additives affect the final properties of the sand 
then we have discussed as a special case some of the indian sands that we had discussed in the last class in the classes before the lockdown period we have also discussed that there are other types of sands also other than green molding sand and we have discussed that in respect to facing sand mold wash baking sand parting sand then we have discussed something called as fluidity why it is so important in the metal casting techniques because if enough of fluidity is not there then the metal or the mold will not get filled up with the uh, metal so that's why fluid is very important we have discussed certain things related to it we have discussed about this test called as the fluid test uh, how it is being done fluidity test okay then the types of molding sand we have discussed we have discussed about the green sand molding we have discussed about the dry sand molding we have discussed about the skin uh, dried molding okay and then we have discussed about the molding machines like jolting machine squeezing machine sand sling machine and one more machine which is a mixture of jolt plus squeeze that also we have learned so these are the these are the different uh, machines that is the jolting machine squeezing machine jolt plus squeeze machine then we have studied about the sand slinging machines then we have seen some videos related to it then we have also discussed about the no mo bake molding processes uh, advantages then plaster molding its advantages then pit molding its advantages or why we do this pit molding all these things we have discussed in the uh, previous sessions okay with that we'll go today with the last part of this unit number 2 which is called as the core which is called as the core and in plural form it's called as cores c o r e s cores the basic reason behind this term cores is that there are certain times in requirement of making of castings that it should be hollow in nature it should be hollow in nature so if you want to create a hollow sectioned casting component then you should make use of a of a thing called as cores in metal casting so that's why i have written that first sentence if you see or read the slide it's written as cores uh, are the objects that are placed inside the mold to form internal cavities of the casting so if you want to create a kind of uh, internal cavity inside the casting hollow components for example if you see an engine block and inside the engine block there you will see that there are cylindrical uh, cavities those cavities if you want to create then you should go for this type of thing called as the core cores are basically used to create cavities inside the casting cavities inside the casting so that, that is the first sentence i have written and cores are made up of special grade of sand called as the core sand now you should remember that core is also made up of sand only that core which is used to create hollow sections inside the casting is also made up of sand only but a special type of sand which is called as core sand it is called as core sand and what is the difference is that it is been baked before it is being used it is being heated and it's been baked before it is being used so that is the second point i have written that uh, cores are made up of a special grade of sand called as the core sand and it is to be baked means heated before it is being used and cores are normally disposable items that are destroyed after solidification so once you do the casting process that is create a cast a hollow uh, uh, casting then the cores will be destroyed inside or sometimes it is been broken and removed out and you get the hollow casting so that is the meaning of that so it is basically a disposable uh, item which is used during the casting process to give you an idea about what is this core i have put this image okay this image so you can see that this is the cope part and this is the drag part now you pour the metal here pour uh, uh, you pour the metal over here so when the metal pours over here it enters into the mold cavity and this is the core which i am talking about which is kept inside the mold cavity the reason why you are putting this one is to create a cavity inside the casting so what will happen is that the metal will come inside will flow over here and then it will surround the core and then it will rise up through the riser once it rises to the riser and once it fills the riser you stop the pouring process you stop the pouring pouring process that ensures that the cavity is filled up with the metal okay so the, here you can see the presence of core inside the mold cavity now the metal, remember thing the what thing you should remember is that the metal will come and surround this core okay and then it will get filled up into this riser section and then once the metal whole component is being solidified then you will get a casting which is having a hollowness inside which is having a empty section inside that is the usage of core so this is the image for that okay this is the image for that if you see this is i'll just read out the parts this is the cope part the upper part this is called as the drag part so this is the riser part after the metal comes and it fills up here so that's called as a riser and it's open riser because it is open to the environment this is the core 
this is the mold cavity this all things what you can see is the mold cavity this is the runner this is the blind riser okay blind riser means it is closed to the environment then there is a well over here so that when the metal comes and falls over here so there should be some kind of cushion so therefore that there is a well there is a gate there is a sprue then there is this is the flask this is the sand this is the parting line and again the sand so these are the basic components of a uh, sand casting uh, mold which we have learned earlier the thing what we had not discussed earlier was that core and core is being shown over here to create a cavity inside now next one more image i have put over here to show you or give you a feeling of again the same core to make you understand how does this core look like so you have the flask over here uh, core part that is a drag part this is the empty mold that is the core so this one thing what you can see is the core this is the core which is used to produce a uh, hollow sections inside the molding ca mold cavity now what is the new thing what you can see over here is that the black color thing that is this one and the, this one that i section what you can see in the top core part and the i section what you can see in the drag part is called as chaplet it is called as a chaplet so remember this chaplet you are coming across for the first time this chaplet why it is being used i will tell you so the thing what you should see is that in the mold cavity you make use of some component called as a chaplet the reason why you make use of this chaplet is to support this core this core has to be supported by something for that reason you make use of this thing called as a chaplet this chaplet is made up of stress metal like mild steel or grey cast iron such type of components and the interesting part is that when you pour the metal when you pour the metal the melting melting point or at at that height of that molten metal it will melt this chaplet and this chaplet will fuse with the molten metal and becomes a part of the molten metal so what you will be getting finally would be a hollow section in this way in this direction with this chaplets gone the chaplets have become a part of that molten metal which you have poured i hope you have understood what is the meaning of this term called as chaplet so chaplets are the metallic components used to support the cores you can see this the cores has to has to stand inside the mold cavity so it has to balance its own uh, you know the position so to balance the position of the core we make use of a chaplet so this chaplets are again made up of metal and it fuses when you pour the metal and it becomes a part of the molten metal or the casting only so this is one thing which is new to you all understand and remember that that is called as a chaplet it's called as a chaplet maybe sometimes the quiz questions can be asked to you that why chaplets are used inside the or when cores are used in the casting so you should remember chaplets are basically used to balance the core part to balance the core part so this is that the second thing what you should be remembering so i have written chaplets are the metallic components used to support the cores they are used to support the cores and the chaplet fuses with the molten metal during pouring so it will fuse with the molten metal when the metal is being poured so this is the thing uh, again here this uh, diagram shows the presence of a core so that's why yes so here one more image i have put uh, like uh, the showing you the uh, core only there also you can see that green thing what you can see dark green color is an other example for the core that just an example to show you how the cores are being used and here these are some of the components which are made uh, by using cores during the metal casting you can see this is the engine block here there is a hollow section sections 1 2 3 4 this hollow sections are being produced with the help of the usage of cores similarly this is electric motor housing you can see that electric motors which we use in our houses its uh, housing means the cover part is being made up of casting while the central hollow section will be prepared or made using the cores similarly one more that is the pump housing you can see all this section inside the hollow sections are produced with the usage of this thing called as the cores c o r e cores okay so this is the thing now we'll go ahead with the type of cores next we'll go ahead with the type of cores so there are different ways by which you can classify the type of core uh, i would like to explain you basic two types one based upon the type of sand that is used to make those cores and another one would be the type of position of the core how do you position the core inside the mold cavity so coming to the first one that is the type of sand what is being used to make the core we can differentiate the core into two types one is called as the green sand core and the other one is called as the dry sand core the first one is called as the green green sand core and the other one is called as the dry sand core 
so when come it when uh, the thing is to be or when we have to discuss about the first one that is the green sand core it is like this green sand core is a type of core or it is a type of core which is produced in the mold cavity while preparing the cope and the dragon only so it is not means that means that the green sand core are one which is not being separately made and put it to, to the mold while preparing the cope and the drag only you will make that core inside if that is the condition that type of core will be called as green sand core okay so you can see here here you can see that this is the cope part while this is the drag part and you want to create a hollow section like this so you have created that created that hollow section inside the core only and that uh, drag only cope and the drag only you have made that Uh, core part core cores you have created if this is the situation then it will be called as green sand core it will be called as green sand core just we'll go ahead with the lines what's written uh, based on the type sand that is used for making the core we have two types one is a uh, green sand core and the other one is dry sand core coming to the green sand core these are obtained by the pattern itself during molding they are not made separately so if you are not making the cores separately out and bringing and putting inside the mold cavity then it is called as green sand core here you will see that this core is being made as a part of the pattern only sorry part of the mold only that is called as the green sand core okay they are made while making the cope and the drag part of the mold or when you are making the mold that is the cope part the drag part you will provide a provision uh, for the cores also making of the cores also and that is called as the green sand core okay but what are the disadvantages of it the disadvantages of this type of uh, making use of green sand core is that you later will be expecting or we will be discussing what are the desired characteristics of the core and one of the desired characteristics of a core is that it should have a very good strength why because you are pouring a metal inside the mold and core is expected to be at the center of the mold cavity and when the core is being at the center of the mold cavity it will be surrounded by the hot metal and it will be exert a pressure on that core and sometimes the core collapses that is called as collapsibility and it is expected that at that duration of time the core should withstand that amount of pressure and its strength should be very high that is called as the dry uh, strength of that sand and if you make use of the same green sand which is used in the normal mold making of mold cavity to make the core then the strength of the core will be very much less so for that reason this making use of the green sand core is disadvantageous in nature so that is the reason why or it is uh, considered as disadvantageous because the, there will be a lack of strength this will show a lack of strength difficult to make long and narrow core features so if you are creating trying to create long narrow featured uh, castings then it is very difficult to make using a uh, green sand core using a green sand core so you should understand that green sand core is basically that that the core is not made somewhere somewhere separately it is made as a part of the cope and the drag that is the understanding behind what is green sand core and second it has some limitations the main limitation is that its strength will be very much low a green sand core strength will be very much low right and long narrow sectioned uh, castings cannot be produced out of it so this is the uh, understanding or the thing goes behind the green sand core yes then the next type of core uh, is called as a dry sand core the next type of core what we are going to discuss is a dry sand core wherein the sand used is dry okay it is not green it is dry like that you can say so dry sand core here what we do is that here the core is made separately outside the mold cavity and then once you prepare that core it is being brought and put it inside the mold cavity so that type of core if you are making use it is called as the dry sand core very simple if you are making the core within the mold cavity only then it is called as a green sand core and if you are making the core separately outside and then bringing it and placing inside the mold cavity then it is called as the dry sand core it is called as a dry sand core as simple as that so we'll read the sentences they is overcome some disadvantages of the green sand core why we are going for dry sand core that because it overcomes some of the limitations of the previous one the first major advantage of using dry sand core is that it will show good enough or better strength than that of the green sand core that is the advantages advantages fact 
okay they are formed independent of the mold and then inserted into the core print in the mold as i said it is made independently outside the mold cavity and brought and placed inside the core uh, cavity core prints hold the cores in the correct position so again you are coming across one more new term called as the core print so what you do here when you make use of the dry sand core is that first you create a mold cavity with some some thing called as the core prints those core prints are the one which will hold the core which you will be making separately out and bringing it over and placing it there so that is called as the core print so if you see here if you see here uh, this is the part uh, or the job i want to make okay this is the front view this is the side view and if you see that this is the projections what you can see this is the hollow section what i want into it so i want basically into this job a hollow section like this so what is the uh, uh, situation you want a hollow section like this so for this you should go for usage of core the core will be like this this is called as the core or uh, the core is like this this one this part inside part this is the core part inside well this is the pattern inside there is a pattern two patterns upper half and lower half and there will be a core inside so this extra part what you can see here and here is nothing but the core prints these are nothing but the core prints so inside the sand mold you will see that this extra part what you have there is called as the core prints these are being there to make that core sit properly inside the mold cavity so this is the understanding behind what is core prints okay so now i have explained you what is the meaning of uh, green sand core and the dry sand core the difference is that in the case of our uh, green sand core the core is not made out separately it is a part of the molding sand and in the case of dry sand core the core is made separately outside the mold and brought and put into the core uh, into the mold cavity and it is being placed on a core print it is being kept on a core print so that is called as a core print okay so they are made up of mixing sand with a binder in a wooden or a metal core box so where this uh, dry sand core are made so for making of this dry sand core there will be another core box which will be either made up of plastic sometimes it can be made up of wood sometimes it is made up of ferrous metal like steel non ferrous metal like aluminum so there will be separate boxes in which you will make the core dry sand core then bring it over here and make use of it so that's what i have written they are made by mixing sand with a binder in a wooden or metal core box which contains a cavity in the shape of the desired core so there there will be a wooden or a plastic mold box in which you will put that sand plus the binder and then make give it a shape of the core and you will bring it and use it over here so that's called as a Uh, dry sand core now i'll show you some images of the uh, cores and in particular these examples are of dry sand core here you can see i am sure that you might have all seen this kind of images right i mean the products like this so more particularly you might have seen some kind of tata ace uh, vehicles carrying this thing from one point to another point on our highways right so these are nothing but the core these are the cores the basic reason why we make use of this is to create hollow parts inside the casting similarly these are also cores right and before they are used inside the mold cavity they are to be baked or heated inside the furnace and for that we make use of such type of ovens so these are the oven wherein you place the core inside and heat it and increase the temperature and then you make use it inside the uh, mold cavity to create hollow sections so these are the uh, cores so uh, based of uh, another way by which you can classify the core is by the way in which you position the core inside the mold cavity okay by the positioning of the core uh, you can classify the cores as uh, like this you can classify it as balanced core you can classify it as cover core you can cover classify it as hanging core you can cover it as call it as kiss core you can call it as vertical core or horizontal core based upon the position how you place the Uh, either the dry sand core or even the green sand core whichever core it is how you place it inside the mold cavity will help you to distinguish into this type so we'll just discuss about some four or five types coming to the balanced core the first one what you can see that is the balanced core so that thing inside what you can see you no know, that is the core and it is being balanced inside the mold cavity how it is being balanced part of that core is plunging into the you know the mold cavity right so by that you balance that whole complete core so that's called as a balanced core so for example there will be a mold cavity and some uh, uh, core will be there 
another example for the balanced core cavity will be like this this one this one the chaplets what i had explained you here here also you can see that this is a kind of balanced core so you are balancing it with the help of the core sand so that's called as the balanced uh, core right so the next one is our uh, cover core so here you can see this is called as a cover core why it is called as cover core the reason behind is that from the top if you see the core is covering the drag part of the mold flask so uh, observer will feel as if the mold or the drag part is completely covered that's why it is called as the cover core but what is the situation the metal will flow some arrangements will be done and the metal will flow around the core and will come up so it will surround the core not okay it's not that the core has completely covered up the drag part of the flask there is a cavity there however from the top if you see you will feel that the drag part is filled up with the or covered up by the core so that's why it's called as the cover core similarly there is something called as the hanging core also so if you can see in this way you can see this is the part which is can be called as the core this core part is been hanged by some arrangement so if this is the uh, manner in which core is put inside the mold cavity it is called as the hanging core similarly there are types like vertical core wherein the core is in the form of vertical direction in like this similarly horizontal if it is in the horizontal position for example like that then it will be called as horizontal core so based upon the position how you place the core inside the mold cavity you can classify the cores as you know vertical core horizontal core cover core then there is something called as the balanced core hanging core kiss core like that so i will ask you all to uh, google about this different type of other course and uh, learn about it however in your syllabus this the type of course we have to discuss only two types one is the green sand core and the other one is the dry sand core that is a type of classification based upon the type of sand which you make use for making of the core right but the based upon the position of the core is not there however to just give you an ex, uh, further information i have just put this slide now coming to the ingredients of the uh, sand core so that sand or the core which you make what it is being made up of as i said in the first slide only that it is made made up of or the cores are being made up of uh, something called as the core sand it is not the normal green sand which is used for making of the cores so for making of that hollow sections we make use of cores and cores are being made up of some special type of sand and what is that sand made up of that sand is made up of three things one is that it is made up of silica uh, bare sand grain sand it is made up of uh, bare sand grains plus it will have some kind of binders and the third one is that it will have some amount of clay in it so these are the three ingredients what the uh, sand core is being made up of if it is bare sand mold the bare sand if you are making or uh, one important part of the core will be your bare sand grains and that bare grain sands sand grains can be of silica it can be of zirconium type or it can be even of chromite sand so different options of the sands are possible you can make use of zirconium sand you can make use of chromite sand or the normal silica sand it has its own advantages and limitations so we will not go into much detail into it however you should understand that the cores have these three important ingredients it is the bare sand plus clay and some amount of additives and that sand can be of again further three types it can be of silica type it can be of zirconium type or it can be of chromite type of sand so this is the ingredients of the core sand or in particular the ingredients of the dry core sand why because if i talk about the ingredients of the green sand core or green sand core then the uh, core or the green sand core would have the same composition of that of the molding green sand but the dry sand core has to be made out separately and brought here and so that composition is important that those ingredients are important and the ingredients are like this these are the three ingredients then what is the sequence of making a dry sand core if you are want making a dry sand core you have to follow out this sequence first one is the mixing of the ingredients the three ingredients what i just mentioned will be mixed uniformly up to what whatever composition you need so for there will be a separate study for that and uh, mixing of the three ingredients will be done then what will be done is that they will pack that core sand in the core box so you should have to make a core you should have a core box i'll explain you that later i have a slide to show you how the core box looks like just now you remember that there will be a box inside that you fix this mixed ingredients and then 
you cover it up and then you heat it to some 250 to 300 degrees Celsius in the oven, just now what I had shown. There you heat it because of which the binder will uh, bind together that sand and that sand will be called as the dry core sand which will be used inside the mold cavity to create the empty uh, hollows or the sections inside the castings. So this is the in ingredients of the dry sand and the sequence of making the dry sand mold. Now what is this core prints? I had told you that core prints are what? Core prints are nothing but there are some kind of provisions being made inside the mold cavity to hold that uh, core what you are bringing and putting inside. So you are bringing a dry sand core and putting inside the inside the mold cavity. So for that core to stand on that mold cavity, there should be some provision. That provision is called as the core print. That is called, called as the core print. So if you see, I have written, uh, the core prints are provided so that the cores are securely and uh, correctly placed inside the mold cavity. So inside the mold cavity, you expect that the core has to be securely fixed or securely being placed. So in order to provide that security, we do that, uh, you know, the, uh, we provide that something called as the core prints. Now what is the expectation out of that core prints or uh, other example, I have just put the same slide from that previous one here also. So these are called, this provision what you provide is called as the core prints here and here. While this is the core, while this is the pattern. Now what output you will be getting out of it, you will get a shape like this one with the hollow section inside, with the hollow sections inside, right. So this provision extra core what you provide is called as the core print. What is the expectation out of that core print? The expectation is that uh, the design of the core print should be such that it takes care of the weight of the core before pouring of the metal and pressure of the metal after pouring. So before pouring, what that core print should be? The core print should be such that it should withstand the weight of the core. The core should not be such high weight that it collapses the um, uh, sand mold itself. So that is the first requirement and second requirement is that after pouring, after the pouring there will be some kind of pressures develop in, developed inside the mold cavity. The core should be or the core print should be such that it should be able to withstand that pressure. That is the understanding behind this one, right? So the core prints are what? The core prints are basically used inside the mold cavity just to securely uh, hold the core uh, inside and why we make use of the core prints for two reasons or what are the expectations out of the core prints? There are two. One is that it should take the weight of the cores and second one is that it should not collapse under the pressure of the metal. So these are the two requirements of the core prints. So we have discussed now about the cores. We have discussed about the term called as the chaplets. We have also come across one more term called as the core prints. We have discussed about the type of core sand, uh, type of cores. One is called as a green sand another one is called as the dry sand core and one more way by which the core can be classified is based upon the position by in which you can you place the cores so that is all we have discussed till now what are the desired characteristics of the cores so what are the desired characteristics what are the cores expected to have uh, as a property so that is what this slide says about the first property that the core should have is that it should have a very good grip strength so before the core is being made, it has to be made in a core box and when you are making it, it is expected that its green strength should be very high. Okay, so that is the understanding behind it or even when you bring that sand core and place it inside the mold cavity on the core print, its strength should be sufficiently enough. So that is the meaning behind it that in the green condition, there must be strong enough to retain the shape till it goes for baking. Next, second one is that in the hardened state, when you harden that core inside the oven, that time also its strength should be very high. That is called as the dry strength. So the green strength should be very high. The dry strength of the core also should be very high. Good refractoriness. So a core is expected to have a good refractoriness. That means when you put the core inside and when you put the molten metal, the molten metal will surround the core. And at that time, it is expected that the sand, you know, that should reflect back the heat into the molten metal and shouldn't. Uh, fuse back or shouldn't melt because of the high temperature of the metal. That is called as the high refractoriness. That is expected out of the core. Then permeability. So what happens is that many situations you have a mold cavity inside you have put the core and the gases are being elaborated or uh, coming out of the molten gases. That has to pass through the core and come outside. So the permeability of the gases to come outside the molten metal should be good for the 
course that is i am understanding collapsibility what do you mean by collapsibility collapsibility the collapsibility means that when you put the pouring metal or molten metal inside the mold cavity that should not collapse the core and if it collapses the core then we will not get the hollow sections so that collapsibility should be such that it should withstand till the metal solidifies and once the metal solidifies it should collapse so that is the understanding behind this one so collapsibility should be optimally good then the friability that friability means that easy removal of the core should be there that is the meaning of friability smoothness the core surface should be very much smooth so because you know that the surface what the core will have will be reflected on the uh, surface of the cavity of the casting what you get so it is expected that the core should have a very good surface finish that is that and low gas emission uh, um, uh, minimum generation of gases during the metal pouring the core should be such that it should not liberate its own gases so if it liberates its own gases then it will relate it, uh, lead to some kind of defects so these are the some of the um, characteristics expected out of the core the same thing is being written here in the next slide very short way that a core is expected to be having a sufficient strength before hardening sufficient strength after hardening it should have a good surface finish it should have generate minimum amount of gases it should have enough amount of permeability it should have adequate uh, refractoriness and smooth surface finish and good collapsibility uh, should be there uh, for a core so these are the different characteristic features of the core so what are the things we have discussed till now we have discussed about the cores we have discussed what it is we have discussed what are cores we have discussed the types of cores right types of cores based upon the type of cores we have discussed about the green sand core we have discussed about the dry sand core and based upon the position there are different types right we have discussed that what are the characteristics features or expected characteristics of cores that also we have learned yes we have learned what do you mean by core prints we have learned what do you mean by core prints we have learned the sequence of making the cores okay sequence of making the cores so these are some of the things what we have discussed today about the core so we have discussed what is this core we have discussed the different type of cores that is the green sand and the dry sand core another type by which how you place the core inside that is called as the positioning of the cores then we have discussed the desired characteristics of the cores we have discussed about the core prints so that core prints are being provided inside the mold cavity to hold that core then we have discussed the sequence in which we make the course so these are the things we have discussed about the course so this completes the uh, things what we have dis to discuss about the course one more thing what i have put as uh, that here in this slide is that the materials which are used for making that core so for making that core that is in particular the dry sand core you should have a core box as i said earlier so that core box can be made up of different materials like it can be made up of wood it can be made up of plastics it can be made up of aluminum it can be made up of grey cast iron or steel like that so these are the some of the images of this this one you can see that this is a wooden core box wooden core box this is the pattern this is the pattern while this is the core box we are interested in core box or core so this is the core right so this is the core box and this is the pattern inside right okay so similarly the core uh, box being made up of you know the plastics also made up of plastics also this is the pattern right so which is used for making the uh, hollow sections this one this will be used for making the hollow sections while well, this is the pattern this is the pattern and this will be the hollowness inside this is the core box complete core box similarly here this is the metallic core box metallic core box this you will understand more perfectly if you have a visit for a have a visit to any foundry industry so uh, and if you have a situation or if you can go for a visit uh, to a foundry you will uh, try to understand this in a more better manner for right now you can understand that different metals can be used for making of the cores and it is being made inside the core box those are called as the materials which are used for making the cores right so even the core box that's what is there metals for of the core boxes so this we have discussed now coming to the last part of this uh, chapter there is something called as the carbon dioxide there is something called as the carbon dioxide molding so you should understand that this is a special type of molding technique okay so i want to again tell you specify one thing is that we have completed with the core part so we have discussed all the things which were related to the core part we have discussed about what is that core 
why do we make use of core what are the different type of cores its classification sequences in which we make what are the desired characteristics of a core all these things we have discussed right and uh, to conclude with i am just discussing about one special type of molding technique called as this carbon dioxide molding is called as the carbon dioxide molding what is the basic principle of this carbon dioxide molding is that it is a normal method of making the molding boxes the molding box will be just made just the similar con conventional method how you make the molding boxes the same conventional method will be applied only the difference is that that conventional mold box what you have made will be subjected to the carbon dioxide gas so carbon dioxide gas will be uh, pressurized inside the molding box and because of which what happens is that the ingredients of that green sand will undergo some kind of reaction and something called as silica gel will be created and that silica gel will be such hard it will be just like uh, like a very good material which will which will turn out just like a material like cement and that will harden up the complete you know the uh, mold sand mold and you will get a a sand mold which is perfectly made so by the passage of carbon dioxide you see this happening okay we'll discuss that more clearly when i go through with the points so you can read this one formerly this technique was used in europe for hardening of molds and cores so in the olden uh, in the uh, previous days this technique was used by europeans to harden the mold and the core so if you want to harden the mold and even if you want to harden the core you can make use of this technique carbon dioxide uh, molding technique previously it was used by europeans and but nowadays it has been adopted in several countries because of the rapid hardening of the sand so basically you use this technique for rapidly hardening the sand if you want to harden the sand very quickly you make use of this technique the mixture of the sand is put into the core boxes by any one of the conventional methods after packing co2 gas is passed into the or forced into the mold at pressure of about 1.4 kg per cm3 so by any conventional method normal method you make the molding sand and then what is the difference is that you pressurize the carbon dioxide gas into that molding sand at a pressure of here mentioned as 1.4 kg per cm3 cm2 at that high pressure you pass that uh, carbon dioxide on that molding sand so because of which that molding sand hardens uh, sodium silicate which is present in the sand in the uh, mold or the sand will react with the co2 gas which you are passing and it gives out a hard substance called as a silica gel so what will happen is that silicon dioxide which is present or sodium silicate which is present in the sand mold will react with the carbon dioxide which you have just passed under pressure and that will that reaction will result a component called as a silica gel that silica gel is very much hard and what it does is that the silica gel hard substances like uh, is uh, like cement and hence it helps in the binding of the sand grains so this silica gel what will be, will it do is that it will create an atmosphere just like the cement so you have seen inside the you know that uh, cement how it is being poured while they make the pillars so that cement will be there it will be having some kind of stones and that cement will once it is being put on the floor or at a structure and if it is allowed for some time it will harden up so something like that will happen with the usage of this carbon dioxide gas so by external use or by some artificial means you are hardening the mold uh, molds that is the core part and the drag part that's called as the carbon dioxide molding that is the basic principle of doing this so so uh, you can see this image over here this image will tell you uh, how it is being done so you can see that the ram mold is there so initially the mold is being rammed with the pattern kept inside so you can see that there is a pattern been kept there then the molding box is there it is being put or uh, sand is being filled inside and then it is being rammed so it's called as a ram mold then you have an external feature by which you will pass the carbon dioxide gas so that thing what you can see that top is for passing of carbon dioxide the b image you can see that that cover is being put on it and carbon dioxide gas is passed that arrow marks will show you that the carbon dioxide gas is passed then or what will that do that will harden the mold that will harden the mold and then what you do is that remove that uh, fixture you overturn this one mold cavity and you will get the uh, you know the cavity like this see now what you do is that in the same manner one more part that is the core part is being prepared and it is being hardened by passage of carbon dioxide gas and then it is being placed on the drag part and you will get the mold cavity like this so basically you should understand that carbon dioxide gas can harden the mold 
it can harden the mold sand that is why it is being used so this understanding you should be remembering and that technique would be called as carbon dioxide molding okay what are the advantages of this technique the advantages are very simple the advantages is that uh, by passing of carbon dioxide your operation becomes speedy it becomes quick and the pattern withdrawal is easier why you have the mold cavity which is hardened which will uh, retain its shape so what happens is that there will be a proper uh, difference between the pattern and the mold cavity which has hardened and you can remove out the pattern very easily that's why i have uh, written here that the pattern withdrawal is easier the pattern can be withdrawn easier easily if you make use of carbon dioxide and castings obtained have close tolerance and good finish so one of the basic reason why you make use of carbon dioxide gas is that uh, to harden the mold cavity is that you will get a better surface finished and good dimensional dimensionally accurate accurate uh, casting sort of it so for these two reasons you make use of this um, um, carbon dioxide gas the first one is that you can we remove the you know the speedy operation will be there the operation will be quick very much speedy in 30 or 40 seconds you will get a hardened mold cavity second one is that withdrawal of that pattern is easier and in fact the third uh, advantage is that the final castings what you get out of this technique will be of good surface finish and good damage accuracy uh, i think this is what about uh, to be explained uh, about the carbon dioxide molding so this uh, Uh, completes the uh, portion of your unit number two. So uh, right now, uh, to say you all is that uh, in this syllabus of uh, metal casting and uh, welding processes, the unit number one I had completed before the lockdown. Unit number two also had completed. Only this remaining part, that is core, had to be completed. That we have completed in today's class. And previously to this, some three classes what I have taken, I have completed the unit number three. remaining portion that is special molding techniques as well as the melting furnaces and the part of the unit number 3 is being completed by professor ganesh chate while coming to the unit number 4 and 5 is been completed by kitur sir and by partly by uh, pradna madam so with this i hope uh, uh, we have completed with the uh, complete portion of our uh, mcwp uh, subject so i would like to stop down over here uh, thank you so much and we have even supplied with the uh, ppts and the textbooks uh, to you all uh, one textbook called as a pn raw plus one more textbook that is amitabh ghosh both these textbooks have been supplied to you all uh, by sir and the notes whatever uh, ppts are there available we have supplied to you all so i think you can uh, go through it and prepare well for the exams and the test which is coming up okay thank you so much